My name is Arius, and I play games. Let me break it down for you. So far, this has been a battle between two men. Robert Altman, High Society, well-connected lawyer with ties to the White House as well as banned from practicing law since the BCCI scandal in 1998. And Chris Weaver, founder of Bethesda, professor, educator, academic. Both men from two totally different worlds, but they met eventually to co-found ZeniMax in 1999 where Bethesda Softworks was reorganized as a division of ZeniMax. After a few years, Weaver became suspicious that Altman was trying to run him out of the company. Around that same time, Chris Weaver and Richard Altman had a disagreement over Chris Weaver's contract forcing some back and forth and ultimately reaching the contract expiration date. Weaver was let go from ZeniMax but argued that he was constructively terminated and sued ZeniMax for $1.2 million. Fast forward to where we are in the series now. The court rules in favor of ZeniMax citing with their assertion that under Section 4.2 of the Employment Agreement, Weaver was required to refrain from fraud in the course of performing his duties, and that the contract includes an implied duty of loyalty to the corporation. So, since Weaver used his master key to enter various offices during off hours to obtain evidence, he was more or less the one committing the crime and should not be allowed to succeed in his lawsuit. But it gets better. Zenimax turns around and countersues Weaver for $75,000 in court costs. That's just insane, man. But there's nothing Weaver can do. He ends up with a shaft and the $75,000 bill while Robert Altman gets to move forward with Zenimax as the remaining founder. I don't know about you, but where I come from, that's considered low and dirty. But that was just phase one of Altman's grand master plan. He wasn't done. Now he needed to move on to phase two, beef up the company so he could sell it for billions. What do I mean by beef up the company, hmm? Well, take this for example. In 2004, ZeniMax acquires the Fallout license from Interplay Entertainment. Altman continued to lead in this direction, purchasing other gaming companies to boost their portfolio. And since stacking his advisory board during the foundation of ZeniMax, he had all the political and high society connections he needed to keep pushing the company into a direction of eventually being sold. Of course, after Weaver was ousted, the company goes on to make millions from the success of games like Morrowind, Oblivion, and of course, everyone's favorite game making them billions. Yes, I said billions, none other than Skyrim, released and re-released for the anniversary of the re-re-re-release of the Diamond Jubilee Collector's Edition Remake. Yeah, dude, I'm kidding, right? But seriously, 10 years later, and they're still trying to make money off of Skyrim? Where's Elder Scrolls 6? And why did Starfield suck so bad, huh? Sorry, I digress. But Altman goes on until 2016, where he finally starts talking about selling the company, and then finally makes a deal with Microsoft and Xbox to sell the company for $8.1 billion. That's right, mother faker, I said billions. So in the end, he did get exactly what he wanted. Da! Is there no justice? Well, stick around, leave a like on the video, and subscribe if you haven't already, because we're still at the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to discover in this series, so tune in next week for the next episode.